Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Jared Blickery, who's tracking all this. And of course, we're talking about the Fed. Yes. A lot of other moves in central banks around the world, too. Yes, and we're going to get to the Ricks Bank in a second because they surprised the market with a 100 basis point move to the upside. And that's what we've been talking about in the U.S., the possibility of what the Fed Federal Reserve is going to announce tomorrow. That would be specifically the Federal Open Market Committee. Um, now, 75 basis points, pretty much a lock right now. We got that WSJ uh, article from Nick Timoreos yesterday. That pretty much locks it in. But I think it, this move just goes to show you what is priced into the market and what is not. Now, we are having a big down day. Well, relatively speaking, it's not big. <laughs> let's go to, let's talk about that um, with some perspective here. But last time I checked, all of the sectors in the S&P 500 in the red. But what we're looking at here is the strength of the dollar, Akiko. And this is something that has been front and center in the minds of investors. And you and I have been tracking the strength of not only the, the U.S. dollar, but the weakness in the yen. And that's been a big uh, outlier because, well, guess what? What is the uh, GDP, or excuse me, what is the um, debt holding by the BOJ to the GDP uh, basis of what they're owning versus what the population owns? Something like 150% of the uh, bonds out there that they own uh, when you compare it to GDP. It took me a minute to find that, but nevertheless, uh, the Bank of Japan has a, a difficult problem here, I think, as you yeah, and I would agree. It's putting it lightly, right? Yeah. We're about. And it's, it's also spilling over into the U.S. and the currency markets all over the world. So Bank of Japan, we're going to be watching that, but another central bank, a bit of a surprise. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about the Ricks Bank. Uh, going back to 1668, and no history lesson needed here, um, they, they raised rates by 100 basis points. Now, what I think is instructive, if we can go back to the Wi-Fi Interactive, you're going to see in the upper left. Now, this is uh, the Swedish kroner versus U.S. dollar. And we can see the U.S. dollar is up 93, 94 basis points right there. Let's see if we can get a graph. Over the last, uh, let's see if we can get a one-year chart. And we're going to see that it is uh, appreciated considerably. Now, these are not, these are not uh, what I would call emerging market currencies that we're looking at here. You look at some of the movements to date uh, in the U.S. dollar, the Argentinian peso, the Brazilian real, all of these are huge moves. But when you measure it against what's also happening with respect to some of these bigger, uh, more established banks like the Rix Banks in Sweden, like um, some of these others, like what's happening with the BOJ in Japan, it really speaks as to the dire situation. When you see all these huge currency moves, a lot of these are highly leveraged, and that's why we're seeing this spill over into the equities markets. If you track it, I did this earlier, I tweeted this. If you take a look at the S&P 500 futures at the same time the Swedish kroner was trading earlier this morning, perfect correlation between that move in the currencies and what's happening in the U.S. dollar. All goes to show you that what's happening around the world is affecting us here and to a large degree. And we look, we pay attention to the headlines affecting stocks every day. Is nickel in the move? in the news, but guess what? Um, there are huge things, global macro things occurring all over the world, and uh, that's really what the drivers are here. And if we're just taking a narrow focus, we're not seeing the whole picture, and so that's what we're trying to bring you guys. Yeah, a good lesson here in central banks as well as currency moves yes. around the world. Jared, thanks so much for walking us through that.